I too filtered by Linux and I saw the one game that wasn't 2D or uh, visual, visual, visual novel. novel. <laughs> or, or, yeah. say it. <laughs> or poor. Welcome back to Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with. I'm Ven Stone here in beautiful downtown Athens, Georgia. I'll be switching the bits, trying to navigate the uh, SS train Tannic. Joined every week by a man up north wearing a blue shirt. Always, um, mock what's, mock. What's, what's the shirt say, chicken boy? It's uh, scale, scale 17. Ah, ah, <laughs> ah yes, the other chicken. Yes. <laughs> California well, chicken. <laughs> well, I, I went and vis- visited the Linux chickens in California <laughs> and I got and the eight shirt. older right? penguins. Yeah. You know, you know li- li- Linux chickens LA, I, I was at their booth. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And that other sound that you hear is a man with a blue microphone cord. Yes, it is true. Hey. And a blue shock <laughs> mount to match as one Pedro Mateus staying up late on the Isles of Britannia together with you, Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form. You know him, you love him. Cocaine Ultra. I can remember that. It, that. it, it, it kind of looks like Pedro's cable is coming out of my arm. Pedro, yes. are, you, are you talking to <laughs> I'm speaking directly into Jordan. <laughs> oh, no, it's just like that. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. It just jumps up on his face. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm just, I'm just like the Borg, right? I got an XLR just hanging up on my shoulder. <laughs> you just plug, plug it in, and it's fine. Just start slapping him around with a mic arm. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a fun show. So, uh, what's up? What's new? Um, I, I am still like thinking about ordering. Um, Okay, I'm not even thinking about it. I got some bids on it. I, I've gone like full hipster with like these old ass lenses. Once I realized that nobody's fucking buying them, mm-hmm. I got somebody sent me the wrong one. That was nice. <laughs> was was it a better lens? No, it was the right lens ah. for the wrong camera. Ah, <laughs> yeah, I get the. I was like, oh, cool. This is like the '70s lens that looks all weird and shit. And I'm like, all right, that's neat. And then, then I got to go through the thing of um. Am I going to fucking bother returning a $20 piece of... I'm like, probably not. <laughs> so there's going to be a story behind that lens. And he was like, why do you have a Minolta lens? I'm like, well, let me tell you about this thing that used to be called eBay. So, so now, now are you going to be on a lookout for the camera that goes with that lens just so that you, if you can find one for cheap? No, but I am going to get an adapter. Okay. Just in case. Just in do case. They- I don't know. Like, what is the pro- adapter like ecosystem for for like camera lenses? Oh, oh, okay. Get a chair. Um, how yeah. jank do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, the, right. Really, it, there's two types. You got just a straight up adapter. It depends if you're dealing with um, micro four thirds, full frame APS C. Um, but there's a you get like a regular adapter, but then you got a thing called a speed booster, which is an optical adapter as well. That's going to give you an extra stop of um, with your f stop. And those can range anywhere from fourteen dollars to five hundred dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have to imagine like all the various like camera manufacturers who they don't want you to be able to like use the accessories from like all the other shit. Well, they get crazy expensive because, um, like, I don't care. I can get the super cheap ones because they don't transfer any of the electronics. Like lenses are crazy these days with the amount of electronics packed into them. Like, I'm only interested in like the old archaic ones. And um, I found one. Like, then you run into problems with like barrel depth and like if you're dealing with the dlsr versus uh you know like micro four thirds and, and, and moral of the story is uh look at the pictures next time you order something on ebay because this is one of the reasons i'm feeling like man it's kind of my fault because if i just looked at all the pictures i'm like that's clearly a minolta mount mm. bump, bump. how about you pedro mateus have you ordered any camera lenses not camera lenses no uh, damn it most <laughs> mostly uh break caliper or enamel paint uh and, what are the blue uh, things on your desk yes uh, i have the little uh microfiber applicators three of them uh six of them are you starting <laughs> a gang no <laughs> it's basically is, it, is, is that his colors the paint is slightly chipped in a couple of spots oh. on the car so uh that is basically to clean and then to apply the um the um well, the actual paint. Uh, so, yeah, well, that that's like a process that we need to do, and it's going to need like a full weekend to do all of that, and to then get rid of the dust, uh, the dust, the rust on the also the brake dust in the uh, brake calipers and the wheel hubs, and paint them to look nice. 
So, so Pe- Pedro, then you, you, you brought up busy starting a game gang and I'm like, oh, who's, who's, the, who's the blue gang colors? I'm like, oh no, is Pedro starting the Cambridge Crips? No, no, he's starting the blue man group. He's, he's the, the, reinventing the, 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 it. The, the Crips, they're, they're as opposed to the Bloods, you know, because, you know, uh. red, red versus... <laughs> Red versus blue? Yeah, red versus blue. Man, YouTube's going to sue you. We're going to get copyright straight. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm going to get shot. What are you talking about? <laughs> Something that never has to worry about getting shot, ladies and gentlemen, is our horse because it's nay impervious. It's next impervious because it's the next fest. It's the Steam. No joke. I love this, man. Next Fest is like, you know what? Valve, keep doing these. Instead of like, hey, here's the spins wheel. Tuesday sale event <laughs> again. No, no, no. We're going to get more and more of these Next Fest. This is the October 23rd edition. It's out now. If you don't know about it, a week long celebration, upcoming games. More importantly, bringing back the demos. So developers have an option to release demos of their games. You can download them. And you know what? Play with them. I know it's a weird concept, right? Normally when you buy a game on Steam, you don't play it. You just put it in your collection and never touch it again. Or, this, or, you, or you play for 20 minutes and then you return it. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's uh, another option that I've seen people do. I went through it, you know, as always, because you can now sort. They've added the option to sort by operating system and you can say multiplayer, online co-op, and all the fun things. I found a couple like Street Uni X looked pretty good, which is a uh, like PS1 era Tony Hawk, except it's a unicycle. So yeah. there's that. Um, Go Micah Ball looked kind of interesting. And Anima? Anima? Anima, 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 Anima? Anima Flux. Flux? Yeah, that, that one looked interesting. It's, it's like a multiplayer Metroidvania, but it's only split screen. There's no online, which it is... It is. Like, you know, I, speaking of games, I immediately uninstalled. Why did I do that? Oh, man. Because the attack button was the right shoulder button on a 2D pixel action platform. Ah, Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 2D. Ah, action platformer the attack button was the right shoulder button it's like these people have no idea what they're doing no gone <laughs> I, uh the not not linux specific but i looked at uh, i looked at a couple the ones that popped up to me were uh thaumaturge that looked kind of neat and paranormal investigators there's like a genre of like the the, the ghost busting games that like we never really played uh on like scene cast that are all like asymmetrical and shit where like one person is the ghost and the other people have to like go go track stuff down so i always thought that would be kind of neat to play in the afternoon uh, what is it uh, white noise too mm. that is a uh, part of the mechanic it's online multiplayer we, we played it once on a friday and uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. The, with, the, with the scoobies i remember that yeah uh, how about you Pedro? <laughs> did you see anything that was gonna like blow your minds i yeah i too filtered by Linux and i saw the one game that wasn't 2d or a uh, visual, visual novel. novel or or <laughs> yeah. say it <laughs> or porn porn yes. yeah <laughs> you but yeah no europa was like the only one it's like hey a 3d game it's about exploration and not very combat focused i, I don't think there's any comment in that one uh it's all like 3d platforming and exploration it's like yeah neat okay I'll, i look forward to that one uh and then i looked at my actual wish list okay games that didn't have a demo up until now wizard which is a boomer shooter pick uh Bless you. in the uh very exony type of situation what exony? Um, what's that supposed to mean use words it is you know similar to exon <laughs> hexen he- hexen yes. okay yes not okay yeah, that, 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 that took me Hexen? that took me a second exon i'm like what, like like a plural of your exes like I, you know i i i i, 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 I was on Hexen? a bit of a cheating binge so i got like eight exon and they're all they all they all want blood like that's what a wizard looks like yeah. yes oh or, guess uh, who publishes it you'll never guess a boogie damn it yeah <laughs> The, the, they, uh, the, them and, um, the blood people and the, um, 3D realms and whatnot, the, the, a lot of, uh, a lot of boomer shooters coming out. And this one, yeah, is very much along the lines of, uh, Heretic and I, Hexen. I, and, I, yeah. I, I gotta say, I'm a little disappointed that the fireballs aren't like the finger guns. Like, if you're going to be a wizard, <laughs> why wouldn't you use finger guns to shoot fireballs? That's like. I, 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 I right? could just imagine like these level designers and people who are like really like balls deep familiar with these old engines. Um, I wonder if they're getting calls like motherfuckers that know Fortran and shit like that. Like ring ring, like hey, would you like to uh, come work on a 
game using an engine from 35 years ago. Yeah, and and then they're like, "Who is this? I can't hear you. You got to speak up." Because right. like, they have up, the, bra- no, they have no, the no. brass horn in their ear. <laughs> no, no, no. They're working on that katana too. And they're like, "Sorry, I've already been made somebody's bitch." <laughs> ah, jo- John Romero just like says, "Put down that phone." John uh, Romero, thank you for growing your goatee back. Thank you. Um, it's starting <laughs> to come back in. I I follow him on Twitch, and sometimes he just streams working on. Uh, What's the name of the level pack that he uses uh, doing for Doom? Uh, oh, yeah, the uh, Sigil? Si- sigil, sigil, yeah. Si- sigil, yeah. And I saw that pop up, and I'm like, oh, cool. John's doing his thing, and he just rambles about stuff, and I'm like, background noise. And it popped up, and he showed up, and he didn't have his goatee. And I, I imagine I was like the fucking baby who sees like the dad yeah. without the beard. <laughs> I was like, put it back. Uh, <laughs> So so what what so what's what's the problem? Is it like too much chin or no chin? It doesn't look like yeah, I would have dude. Um John Romero with that goatee, you would talk to him, walk by him, never know. Okay. They, uh, <laughs> you, it, it just loses the look. You just like, like I, I he's, had no he's idea who that was. I had to do it up wait a Oh no! And then I was like, oh, and, and then you're like, oh no! John Romero just made me his bitch. I I, can, I, <laughs> I I personally want to believe his wife was like, John, shave that off, and he did, and she's like, you can grow that. Yeah, back. no, I changed my mind. Do you still have the beard? Can you just like glue glue yeah. it back on, please, please, and thank you. Yeah, she shows up with some glue. <laughs> have you flushed it yet? No. Okay, go, go get it. <laughs> uh, bad news, everybody. Steam was hacked in a new and interesting way. Yeah, this is this is a thing. Uh, the the announcement came before sort of the uh, the backstory behind it, but Valve is going to be requiring uh, SMS confirmation every time uh, you do a game update if you are a developer. Uh, that's one way to cut down on shoveler was my initial thought, but it turns out that uh, there were there's at least one case. Uh, Nanowar cells versus virus. Um, someone scooped their uh, session and was able to upload a bu- uh, infected version of their game to Steam and infected a bunch of people uh, and. There wasn't too much damage done, but that is that has prompted Valve to be like, "Hey, you know what? Let's put the kibosh on this happening from now on." So you're going to need a phone number if you're going to want to update games going forward. And they say like, "Oh, well, if you're a developer and you don't have a phone number, too bad. You got if you want to update your game, you're going to have to get one somehow." Uh, but I, I mean, like at, at the same time, it's kind of necessary if people are able to. Uh, Because like Steam, Steam is a trusted like software distributor, right? Like you don't you don't really apply you don't really think think too much about about, yeah yeah you know you really never (laughs) and people are bound to take advantage of it, so it makes sense that they need to put a production like this in place. It's like your it's like your uh, software repo. You don't really question if like the software you get from like Apt or Yum or whatever is like compromised or anything. Hang on, NPM is just in the chat. And okay, we don't we don't we don't talk about NPM here. (laughs) NPM can go wait in the fucking garage. Uh, Along with Pip. You think about it, though. Like, this is something I, you know, once this news came out, I was like, it's a massive, juicy target for people who want to distribute mm-hmm. malware. You, you, we never think about it. Like, you never yeah. go, hmm, should I even be concerned yeah, about should. malware? We, we just assume this was taken mm-hmm. care of. So that yeah, leads me to, because, you know, I've definitely read a couple of reports on Hacker News from, um, Android app developers and uh, people who make plugins for like Firefox and Google, they share their stories and like the email chains from uh, bad actors, I guess, who come in and like shady ass hey, companies. <laughs> we'll give you no. This is just straight up people wanting to inject malware. This is like not other like entities that you could go get. They're like, dude, we'll give you fifteen thousand dollars if you put this and this. No problem. No not, so it's not even asked. like ransomware. It's just like, hey, yeah, go 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 include this binary. Hundred percent. And uh, I, I wonder if we're going to start seeing that, or if that is something. If you're a developer and like you've had somebody show up, like, hey, just get just, just man, put that. In, yeah, not worry and, about and, it. And, and and they're not the NSA. No. Yeah. If they're the not whole, from the government uh, and here to help, yes. Yeah. Asking Linus Torvalds is like, did the NSA ever approach you about including a backdoor? No. <laughs> Absolutely not. I, I could I couldn't tell you if they did at all. It would it would be it would be very improper if I mentioned that people came some individual named John Smith came to my door yeah. and made some threats. But that didn't happen though. And this wasn't even like a good Tom Cruise dangling from a ceiling hack. You know, they just got a hold of the browser tokens and mm-hmm. they had his repo it, and they the pushed session out. tokens. It's, no. it, that's the way to get around multi-factor authentication. 
So uh, let's just put another uh, multi-factor authentication after the session token. Okay. There well, you go. <laughs> I mean, who uses a Steam card? Who? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, yeah. I, at, th- at this point, it's kind of it's, it's inconvenient. It's the only option because you can, I'd use Authy if I could. I, well, I, I mean, you you can you can you can log in without MFA, but like even even now, like the whole authenticator app, you scan the QR code and. It's just more convenient to log in through Steam Guard. Now, it is if you have enough time to wait for the app to open. Mm-hmm. <laughs> if you have those 30 seconds while it's just there. I ran into nothing. this, <laughs> I think last week I was logging into uh, Steam for whatever reason. It just fucked off on this uh, Jordan's PC that I used for Trackmania. I'm like, well, I don't remember the password for that. All right, Steam app. Doop, doop. And I hit it. And what I was worried about was because I use uh, the dark mode in Chrome, mm-hmm. so it flips everything and inverts so everything's always dark. So the QR code was like, flipping. like I don't even know if that's going to work. I took a picture with the uh, QR code login, and it just froze on the app. And I'm like, well, I guess that didn't work. Fine, I'll look it up. <laughs> so I set the tablet down on the desk, and I go into Google Docs to go look that up. To what Pedro was saying, it was like 45 seconds later, it logs in. I'm like, I've never had that hell? big a delay. It, it takes a while. It, it's always taken a while for me. It's annoying. <laughs> It's been like maybe 10, 15 seconds at most for me. I don't know. But I mean, no, it's long right? enough that you actually put the phone on. It's like, OK, I guess I'll just uh, ask for the code then. And then it just signs in. Ah, all right. OK. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I guess for me, like that, that amount of time is like, oh, well, I got to enter my username and password, go find my phone and like punch in the code. That's about the same time it takes to go through the whole single sign on process. Mm. So I don't know. Mm. As long as you're able to sign in, you know, that, that's yes. like the, the terror thing. Like whatever happened to like, here, this would be dope. Pavel. Let me install that on more than one. Like, give me two. Give me, let me have a backup device with the uh, steam authenticator installed on it. Well, do, uh, so do, do you think they're going to like add some steam authenticator stuff to this? Because like as SMS is an okay authentication mechanism, uh, but like, it's, it's not horribly, the most yeah, secure. It's not very, yeah. yeah. Thank you. It, 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 it's, it's convenient because it's, it's everywhere. It's better um, than nothing. Y- yeah. So yeah, ah. may, maybe maybe they'll add some Steam Guard stuff to this, or like some other multi-factor authentication. Because like, yeah, yeah. It's, it, have, requiring a phone number is kind of boo boo. But also like, I don't know if you're if you're a publisher with a business, you should probably have a phone yeah, number. Yeah, you probably have a that's, business <laughs> number. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got a phone, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah well, you get, oh, that, man, that, see that, that, that story is coming later. An intelligent <laughs> person would have structured that correctly in the show notes, which I'm right. not. <laughs> Therefore, no, no, we no. have to talk about the legacy version of CSGO. And uh, we got some bad news. We got some bad news. I want to give this a mention. Uh, a little bit of shout out to our brothers and sisters because um, uh, it's going away on Mac. That's right. Because we talked about the new Counter Strike 2, as it's called. You know, CS is go bye bye. And moving forward, Counter-Strike 2 will exclusively support 64-bit Windows and Linux. Yeah, no longer will they support Mac OS. And because they say combined, uh, let's see, DirectX 9, 32-bit operating systems, all that's going to be gone. And, you know, all of these users combined uh, represent less than 1% active CSGO players. Jeez, Pedro, that sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does. (laughs) And especially when you read, like, the um the comments on articles discussing this okay we did that earlier uh, this week in uh our yeah. discord because it was over at macrumors.com is where i got this story oh yep. boy that was a popcorn you, you read the comments and you the first instinct is wow uh these mac people are a little bit out of touch and then you remember six years ago before a proton was a thing and you go oh yeah that's why those comments look familiar we used to see a that lot of those was, from the Linux community that, as well. That was me once. It was that was me. us, man. Um, so yeah. they're so they they are keeping the old um, the old version of Counter Strike Global Offensive around. Uh, they're going to be updating it until the end of the year. So if you have bugs, get them in now. They may not get fixed, but this is the last time you're going to be able to get those voiced. Mm-hmm. Um, and it will you'll be able to uh, continue to play the 64 bit version uh, if you're on if you're on 32 bit Windows. Or if you prove if you can prove that most of your Counter Strike playtime is on Mac since the announcement of this, then you are, you're eligible for the Prime status refund. They'll refund all the money that you paid. Um, and yeah, it's 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 a little sad, but uh, I think I think we know we we all know the reason why this is actually happening is we could we could have had nice 
OS 10 support if Metal uh, had like some way to easily adopt it into like other code bases vis-a-vis like How Molten VK. Accuse right. Apple of doing Apple like things, but <laughs> right. you do have to imagine somewhere at Valve that email was shot out of like because yeah, that flat company structure Valve is very famous for. I could just see the uh, you know send to all like, hey, does anybody want to learn metal for the Apple thing? And that email was never replied to. Yep. So, <laughs> no. th- there is no metal equivalent of like Joshua Ashton or. Uh, or an error, anything like that. Like, well, there's other, an interesting other, comparison Deutsche to be made yeah, to that, though, yeah. because, like, <laughs> what can you say about metal? It's that one thing you can write once and run there in the Apple yes. ecosystem on the... Now, it is a bigger proposition now that they're kind of just running everything on the M-series chips, but I know I was thinking, oh, so you mean it's like DirectX? I'm like, but to what Jordan was saying, there's no translation from that to anything else, and nobody wants to learn metal outside of app developers. And, you know, to, to Larian's credit, they made that. Um, so, yeah, it sucks if you just drop 12K on the um, your new Mac Pro gaming rig. That's minus the <laughs> wheels. The wheels are another $4,000. So, mm-hmm. yes. But, yeah, no, I, I, I'm at least happy to see that Valve is offering the people the option to continue playing the, CS, the last version of CSGO. Like they did with 1.6, like they did with CS Source. You won't have the official matchmaking, but you'll still be able to play in the community servers. And as money grubbing game publishers go, Valve is still one of the best. I was just trying to help them out, man. But okay, <laughs> here's the real question. This is what I want to see some comments on. Does anybody that listens to this show, did there has to be at least one person statistically, whether or not they're willing to admit it publicly is another thing that purchased an Apple laptop. I'm not talking about your iPad Pro. I'm talking about a desktop, you know. Did you buy that with the intent to also, like, that is also your primary gaming rig is what I'm trying to ask. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm in the Apple ecosystem, but I also got this to play games too. That's why I spent X, Y, Z extra money for the RAM upgrade or, you know, for the more the, GPU the, the, cores. The dedicated <laughs> GPU, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I mean, maybe. I, I would think most of the people are like, hey, I use my Mac for like content creation and shit, and I want to play a video game or two in my spare time. Yeah, I, I, th- I think it's less so what what you described, but yeah, like I feel bad for those folks who are like, oh yeah, I got this brand new Mac and I can't play my games with it anymore. I guess you can install Windows on. Well, I'm thinking about the person who's doing the mental gymnastics of like, okay, I am paying a 600 percent premium over the equivalent PC hardware. Uh. How can I justify gaming? Yes, I want to make sure that's why I can get the 128 gigs of solid yeah, no, memory because RAM. Mac got, used to get more games than Linux. Hey, man, you shut up because it was that's how I got my free copy of Portal. <laughs> that uh, when they had uh, they they released uh, Steam OS on when well, Steam just Steam on uh, Apple they had that release day they you could get a free copy of Portal and so that was the first time I installed mm-hmm. Steam. I'm like. All right, wine, boom, got it. And a couple of years later, I played the game. So yeah, if you game on Mac and like this hits you, like, let me know. I'm curious. Like, I want to talk to the person who like legitimately is like, yeah, this this kind of fucked up. And I'm going to ask for your Steam profile and shit too. Because I know somebody's like, yeah, I game on Mac all the time. Let's talk. Like, uh. So, (laughs) but I guess it's been about three years, man, because that was my prediction. Very safe prediction, by the way. I know uh, when the M1 was released and it's like when we're just going to start seeing it roll off because but does it really change though if you've been gaming on the mac the entire time because it's always been a boutique novelty thing to like get a game right well so the the the, the other thing that occurs to me is that like one one, th- one thing we're not even considering in the mac gaming space is mobile because there's a shit ton of iphone games that's well, where a lot of people who are gaming on mac that's where like their apple arcade shit is right mm-hmm. like if you're yeah, if you're playing the, like Fantasian are, or Hello Kitty Island Adventure, like there's there's still games, right? Like the, the, yeah, the, this, those, this is what the, Mac those are a is. specific platform for games. That there's no Steam for mobile. Uh. <laughs> no, it's, it's it's iTunes. That's what that is, yeah. right? Like mm-hmm. it's Apple, Apple Gaming, <laughs> Apple Arcade. That's it's not it's not cross platform, but that that is kind of what the shape of Apple Gaming is these days. Is shit you can play on your phone. Yeah, I mean yeah. Apple's very much like we would much rather you um, sell your game through our store. No. You have, to. but <laughs> no, no, not not you. Otherwise, Pedro is for your Timmy own safety. Happened. It prevents malware, like Steam. 
Like like Fortnite. Yeah. Yeah. Ask Timmy what happened. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> you know in Apple's defense on that one, like, it's like he was asking for it. Like it's that defense, right? <laughs> and, and 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 in the judge's defense, they came up with the best ruling that pissed everyone off. Fuck so. Yeah, it's right. like everyone yeah. loses. Yes. <laughs> I can get behind that. Uh Pedro saw a mech game and I'm like, cool. New mech game. I'm happy about yeah, it. Yeah, new mech game, gear bits. And uh, it was named that we have Armored Core at home in the notes. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, okay, I can see that. But it, there's a lot more Earth Defense Force with the giant bugs that you're shooting around with your uh, jet packs and your pew pew guns. Oh, what are you saying? If you not watch people play um, Armored Core, because that has tons of bugs in it. <laughs> I, yes, I it does have a, the big like bugs. A- <laughs> I, I, I do get more of like a mobile suit Gundam games on like the PS2 for this, but like I like those games; those were fun as hell. Um, and like yeah. this is a one-person this, this project one looks, too. This is it, yeah, and it looks way too good to be a. Uh, uh, let's just get something together to capitalize on the renewed popularity of the Armored Core series. So it's very good to see, and it, it like the trailer looks genuinely nice, and it's only over here. It's eight pound fifty, so I'm guessing nine ninety nine. Yep, it's. Uh, yeah, no, it it looks pretty good for what it is. Yeah, I'm I'm down. I'm definitely would give this a try. Uh, I, I I like the old school robot brawlers. Uh, I guess I guess they they're of the same like genre as Dynasty Warriors, and I was always into that sort of Musou game. As long as mm, yeah, into the, a, like the over exaggerated and... everything. Yeah, yeah, I never get into yeah, like the Gundam thing. This is, looks like it's more my speed though, because it looks like it's a lot more fast paced than you know. Mm. As, soon, as soon as you say Mac. I think anybody my age goes to Mech Warrior Two, and which goes to zzz, mm. zzz, 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 zzz. Well, well, yeah, well, walking tanks right. as opposed to like crazy robot mm-hmm. fights, right? So uh, looks the business nine ninety nine. Go check it out if you get a chance. Um, but the big all you news, need is a hard drive. System yeah. requirements just say you need the storage. That's it. One point five gigs, man. Jeez, storage, Fair. dude. Storage <laughs> is getting so cheap now. It is uh, it's embarrassing, man. Oh Except man, hard drives. <laughs> Prime the fucking Prime Day thing that pissed me off. Okay. Those hard drives I bought to rebuild my NAS. How much? Twenty five percent off on Prime God. Day. Didn't Damn. buy them from Amazon, so I can't even fucking return them. Oh, <laughs> that'll teach you to that's, support local businesses. <laughs> that's the that's the big fuck you. Is like, oh my god, these are the same drives. What do you mean they're fifty dollars off? Ah, man, talk about like the one piece of tech that you'd be like, can I return? No. And and it, and it's like. If I had waited, those other drives would have died and I would have been fucked either way. So, like, there's, there's, no, there's no, yeah, there's no way to win that. No. <sighs> kind of like our next story, which is uh, <laughs> Diablo. I, you can win Diablo, just give enough money. Diablo 4 is coming to Steam, and I think we gave it a mention, but the reason I want to bring this up Adam Fletcher, you might know him. Uh, th- doesn't he have an interesting, famous quote? Um, something about phones, or was that him? <laughs> yeah. Was that, was that him? I think that was him. Think it, might uh, yeah, it was one of the you, people you, you, that was on stage for the uh, Diablo you, you mobile get, you, you guys have phones, right? <laughs> right? Well, we all got phones. You, um, so I got a Steam Deck. Yeah, right. Uh, check this out, though. Here's what he says. And hey, Diablo 4 is not our thing, and I know the internet's having a fun time. You know, it's popular to hate on the game right now for whatever reason. Like, fine, whatever. Uh, we've been hearing some questions about the Steam Deck verification. That's where I'm going with this. Uh, happy to say Diablo 4 will be Steam Deck verified starting next Tuesday. So the launch of the game, it'll be ready to go. Seasons of Blood, whatever, buy all of our DLC or whatever. P.S. By the way, LOL, suckers, you got to buy it again. If you already purchased means, it on Battle Just Navic. those words. Steam Deck, uh, Diablo 4 will be Steam Deck verified. It's like, it wasn't that long ago that that wouldn't even, that would have well, just laughed. <laughs> it wasn't that long ago that trying to do that would get you fucking banned right? because you're hacking. Yeah. So, so like, because the warden so th- was just banning people using mine. So that, that that's that's what I want to know is like, are are we gonna see some like more Linux friendly battle net, or are people gonna drop sixty bucks, eighty bucks on Diablo Four on Steam, play it on their Steam Deck, and get their asses banned? I'm more interested in like, so you're not. It's like Blizzard. Do you want to publicly admit you can make a game without some bullshit launcher in front of it? <laughs> it's gonna be online. D4 is online only too, right? Like yes, that kind of like Diablo which, kind of, which defeats the purpose of having it on like a handheld where you can take it anywhere where you wouldn't necessarily have an internet connection. So you can play your your Diablo uh, 
How, how often are you right. out and about? Do you guys not guy? have phones? You could tether. Yeah. Tether your phone, create a hotspot. Oh, <laughs> okay. you know, hang on. I, I need to know. Jordan, has your Steam Deck left your house? Yes. Where? Uh, I have taken it in the car sometimes when I need to go to my in-laws' place. Oh, okay. <laughs> and and, and my, 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 my wife is dealing with her, her, with her parents, and I'm in the basement on my Steam Deck going... Doo, 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 mm. doo. Fair enough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, what, if you're a fan of Diablo and you want to buy the game again, but to what Jordan's saying, like, what you need to take away from this, and what Pedro's touching on, is this is Blizzard going, all right, fine. We're going to at least make sure this thing works on the Steam Deck, and that is a very important data point. And, like, I, I, I like Diablo. I just don't like Blizzard as a company. I, you know, I, I'm a, if, if it got cheap, if it got cheap, I might pick up D4 on Steam. Uh, but I, I don't know. I don't play Diablo. Uh, I've never know. played a Diablo okay. game. I, I take that back. <laughs> I've compiled the open source Diablo 1 because it has multiplayer in it. And mm-hmm. that's as far as I ever got because one day I'm going to, me and Jordan are going to click around in that damn thing. Yes. But, yeah, Diablo one and two are great because they were made by people who no longer work at Blizzard. Diablo, in fact, they were Diablo two was great. A, Diablo yeah. one's okay. Diablo one was the experiment. Uh, yeah, but yeah, no Blizzard North. Uh, the people who were a part of that uh, then went on to become um, uh, what was their name? Runic Torchlight. Runic, yes. <laughs> and the then, Torchlight and then people. <laughs> and then they died. And then we have nothing. We got, yeah, we got no, Torchlight we, Infinite We don't know whatever. where the Torchlight people ended up because Runic Games did go away. Which is unfortunate because Torchlight was like the perfect reinvention of uh, Diablo. They even yeah. got Matt Wellman to come back and re- uh, do the, um, the original soundtrack for the game. That was just... Love it. <laughs> but I mean, it didn't have any microtransactions. I know, right? You can you can mod the microtransactions and it's okay, fine. All right, all right, fine, fine. All right, then then we can call it authentic Diablo. Yeah, well, like, you you can you can make a text box appear where you can punch in your credit card number. It's fine. <laughs> One thing that you're probably never going to need to play any version of Diablo for the foreseeable future, maybe six, possibly seven months, is a forty eighty. But even then, Nvidia doesn't believe that's going to be enough. Not for them, no. anyway. Not, not for Starfield, anyways. <laughs> no, apparently, uh, they didn't like the 4080 or the 4080 that they unlaunched. Uh, so now, then they the 40 released 70? the 4080 Ti. Yeah. Uh, and now they're going to release the 4080 Ti. Yes, I know what I said. <laughs> so, Mega Size GPU, one of the uh, prolific le- uh, leakers on um, Twitter, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, saying that there will be a 4080s maybe a ti uh super uh in early 2024 with the ad 102 gpu and a tgp below 450 watts we'll see about that uh, if, if the what was it the 4080 that had a, a tgp of about 350 was peaking to 600 watts we'll see how uh, how high that one peaks uh but yeah it is uh, nvidia apparently seemingly hung up on the 4080 naming scheme for some reason so <laughs> buy it you Everyone's... guys why, why why aren't you guys spending eleven hundred dollars on gpus <laughs> this one's this one's a twelve hundred dollar one go buy it everyone's pointed out at the time when they were releasing the 4080 and the 4080 that having two different cards with the same name was stupid when they were so different you know like the titan everyone also X pointed out titan like bitch X. that ain't a 4080 like, yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that's that's a 40 that's a 4070 and they're like no the 4070s the then nvidia had the first uh, at least recorded history unlaunching of a product mm-hmm. yes like where yeah, it, 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 they did that uh with like the the pascal they had the titan x for maxwell and then the pascal titan they also called the titan x why because fuck you they should have called it people- the 4080 tie tie harder <laughs> no no then people started calling the titan or, x pascal the the titan T-I-T-S. X-P. So then the, NVIDIA the re- released the new Titan X, which they call the Titan XP, just to make things even more fucking what confusing. About, what about Volta? <laughs> that was the, just a the, Titan V. That was fine. <laughs> okay, so now here's my take on this. So Titan, basically, the they're going to be giving us a... This is all fantasy stuff. Unless you got the mad cash to like drop on a 4080, more power to you. Slightly faster 4080. Same price. More memory. More power. So if you're going to be looking at like a 20 gig 4080, okay, 
and about one grand, 1.2 grand, you know, 1,200 bucks. I think this might be targeted at a very particular segment of gamers, everyone. That segment is people who like to play a game called Training AI Models. <laughs> Generative AI neural networks. <laughs> because, like, release a budget card for that without saying you're releasing a budget card for that? It would look awfully like that. <laughs> Is what's getting released that make doesn't make a whole lot of damn sense outside of any other lens to me. Like, yeah, look, this twelve hundred dollar card, buy the fuck out of them because they will. High memory yeah. Nvidia <laughs> CUDA, look, yes, done. Well, yeah, they, they've really been doing a good job at starving us for like the high memory cards, right? They've been they're like, no, eight gigs is what you get for the longest fucking time, uh, and now now we're starting to see like stuff above 12 and 16 gigs but they're they're charging for it man like nvidia's got it unlocked and like and uh, yeah this this is just like one of those curious things it's a news item that's why we're talking about it i don't think anybody here anytime soon will be uh no not no. Not, not unless one of us wins the lottery or gets like a scratcher ticket it's like yeah even then i bucks. refuse i refuse to spend more than 400 currency units on any one individual bit of hardware yeah okay will you refuse to accept Hardware that costs more than four hundred. I don't know. <laughs> There's been documented evidence that I. Pedro's just like, give me that fucking four. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Shut up. Get that, out of the house. That, that page, Pedro will just open his throat and roll, roll up his mouth and relax his throat. Do you just use AMD <laughs> card in the bed. Yeah. He's like, what? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah and AMD, AMD, AMD. I don't care. Why not? Team Gray, yeah, that, it, there's, there's if like you're a willing to uh, poster give of Lisa me Sue a forty eighty, hey, you have way too much money. Uh, <laughs> oh no! And he's got the he's got Doctor Sue on the back, rips it, and his Jensen behind it. He's like done. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you don't have too much money. You're like one of us. <laughs> you're just like <laughs> you're, you're one of the poor's. Yes. Uh, yes. You're part. Of, we know our station, kids. <laughs> and you want something a little more budget oriented? We talked about this last week, but the number digits are in. We're talking about the Arc A five eighty. So much sparkle, yeah, Mister Sparkle. <laughs> Not one, but dual orc. axial. It's a sparkly bend. orc. <laughs> Three display holes, one HDMI hole, and look, they got some benchmarks over it terms hardware, so we can extrapolate, because that's what we do. Where does this thing land? Well, it's faster than a 6600 from AMD, which ain't saying much. But it's also faster than the 3050, which, you know, through the correct lens, you're like, that, that's not too bad, now is it? And this is kind of universally. So what's a little bit faster than the, um, you, once you, well, it's all like Intel on the low end, the A770 and yeah. uh, the 750 is going to be faster. But there's a problem though. There's a legitimate problem with, um, cause you're like, okay, you know what? It's faster than 3050. Maybe I'll pick one up. Well, in order to do that, everyone, uh, it needs an additional 71 Watts compared to the 3050 to get that, well, how much faster, Vin? Uh, a couple percentage points. Single digits. Sometimes. It depends. <laughs> I saw the it, uh, Paul's hardware uh, review video that he did. And you know, the here's five, the 3050. Like, yeah, the 580 was getting between uh, 15 and 20 FPS more than the 3050, which is considerable when you have a 180 dollar video card getting 15 to 20 fps I'm just more not seeing okay now in all fairness this is the only chart that fucking matters which is TV <laughs> gaming my for minecraft um okay we got minecraft so let's take a look metro at metro exodus, exodus. Right. we have a 3050 at 57.4 and a yeah where's, where's and this 580, 580 at 103. <laughs> look at that now that's a good jump right there isn't it yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and like and uh, the, the 3050 it, is forty dollars more expensive than the 580. Speaking of uh, and speaking of the ML stuff, uh, the ML performance on the 580 is actually also better than mm -hmm. the uh, mm -hmm. than the uh, 3050. Now, just well. to be very clear for those of you listening, like the vast majority of these benchmarks are like from 24 to 28 FPS. Yeah, like it, it it's not it's not much, but like. And the other thing, too, they, they note is that the review unit, in terms of like actual acoustics, is very very loud. Um, well, it's also because it's using very, very power. Uh, yes, that, yes. That, 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 that is kind of why. <laughs> it's but a, like, how many is it? Dual eight pins or dual six? Dual eight pins. Oh, Ooh, that's that's that's, that's spicy. 
But like, I, I, don't, I don't know. Hopefully, like, just at this price point, it's something that can a fill out the mid range and b give Intel some like market footprint, so that there's like justification to be like, hey, maybe release Battle Mage. Hey, maybe have games have some driver support for these Intel cards. Because we mm-hmm. again, we a we need that mid range, and b we really need Player Three. We need we need something to like make and AMD they and Intel have easily, lower the prices. If- if instead of 180, even with the power usage as it is, if they'd done 150 instead, they would have just sold out. The 580, as soon as it hit, would have been immediately gone because at 100 and $150 MSRP, plus whatever that means in your region, over here it would be probably 150, 160 pounds, but that would effectively create the new entry level the 580 would be the new entry level just there done <laughs> this would have been a very interesting compelling product yeah if it was 20 dollars less than it released a year ago when it was announced yeah <laughs> we're not in that situation at yeah. this time but i don't want everybody to get sad because there's also something a little interesting on the horizon here dg2 battle mage bitches the book b What's that? Oh, right. Oh, okay. So there, there's some data bits from the Intel GFX patch being sent upstream for not one, not two, not tres, but quattro new Intel GPUs are heading our way. That's all That's we got. Funny. That's funny, too. This answers the question from last week of what drivers do the Intel GPUs use? By the way, motherfuckers. <laughs> 915. Um, <laughs> yeah. Tur- turns out. Here's, here's your answer if you were curious. So we got the PCI IDs. Uh, yeah. I mean, we don't know for what, but... yeah. The- these are just the IDs that it doesn't really say mm-hmm. much beyond. Could be the new. Basically, uh, I915 goes, okay, I see that ID. I I am that driver. That's it is it. the new PCI Express <laughs> Intel Battleham um, meet the monitor. We don't know. So I'd be down for that. Yeah. Battle Mage. Uh, we're, we're, we're looking forward to it. I mean, you know, this is, if you were an early adopter, you know, it's still a good time. If I find, you know, a $200 like 770, I'm going to pick one up because that's one of those cards that's going to grow and mm-hmm. they're going to get faster. And by the time Battle Mage rolls out, Intel's already had enough of these because you know they're effectively been giving away arc cards at cost to get them out of the market to get the data bits the data points so they can start really making real drivers and they've proven so far into here i am rooting for intel this feels weird as hell right um they've proven that they're committed to developing the drivers at least on the windows side but that's also spilling back over to the linux they're side, using the xvk for their drivers yeah they're, they didn't the thing right <laughs> well I, oh great after like the initial like however long that was yes worked its way into the plan and after the launch until somebody was like cut the shit all right uh so i we i think everybody can have reasonable hopes for battle mage i think it's going to be an actual like product product instead of what we've had with arc which is more of a test bed that also the Archmage launch was like a complete shit show. Like that. Oh yeah, was, it was like six yeah. months late, and it yeah, nothing like, worked. I mean, we yeah. still have problems. Like I don't know yeah. games like uh, what was it? Starfield didn't work. Mm. Yeah, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. They, they they lost half their driver team, and yeah, yeah a, a boat got stuck, and oh man, it was it was not good for a product. It launch. was a calamity of errors. Speaking of. Errors. <laughs> well, this may not be an error because uh, Unity former now CEO uh, John Ricciatello is leaving the company, and uh, that oh, no. doesn't really matter over here at Linux Gamecast. No, no, no. We're here to talk about the replacement because John Ricciatello he sold most or all of his shares in Uni- in Unity, so he's got a big, big money cushion to land on. Uh, but That's the no. face of a man with a big money cushion. Oh, that yeah, is the no, face he, of a man who that just smug farted. Look in his face. Uh, but his, no, his we're here to are t- still holding. We're here to talk about the person who is replacing him in the uh, position, which is uh, James M. Whitehurst, Jimmy a. Jim Whitehurst. <laughs> yes, from Slippin Jimmy, formerly Red Hat. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, he's the going to be the new president and CEO of Unity, which I think we're all at least optimistic. Because uh, he, as a track record, uh, doesn't have a recorded quote as saying that developers who don't maximize profits are, and I'm quoting, fucking idiots. It wasn't maximize profits, it was uh, microtransactions, if you're going to quote them. Um, 
Yeah, Rich Teller was the, the one who the wanted a dollar the for, uh, for a reload. The fucking idiots. <laughs> well, the fucking idiots is accurate. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that was the bit that I said. It's like the actual quote. <laughs> Well, I, I, either way, yeah. Uh, so, so J- Jimmy, Jimmy, slipping Jimmy here. Uh, for, formerly of Delta, form, uh, formerly of IBM, formerly Red Hat. Lots of formalities here. He has a bit of a reputation for coming in when companies are struggling and making making them operational again. At least from from as as we were talking about in the pre super shows and from like a from a corporate standpoint. So. This 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 very much seems like the board is in damage control mode. They're putting like a level headed person in in charge to see what they can salvage from this fucking dumpster fire that is like the 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 embers of Unity's goodwill. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Another way to look at it is it's all going exactly according to plan. Mm. Yeah, all, all according to Keikaku. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, we are the financial masterminds and uh oh, corporate yeah. structure overlords we understand it. we got a better grasp on this than uh everyone else now yeah homeboys we've known we talked about it that dude was heading out the door like he knew this shit was coming on now what i want to know when we're reading the book in a couple of decades this is what's gotten me interested how long ago did he know and was it his idea or was he sitting there going because dude's a fucking rat rats know how to fucking survive this shit He's like, flee the, flee the sinking ship. Yeah, he's like, I gotta get the fuck out of here. We gotta cash this shit out, and I gotta get out the door, homie. That's well, the part I'm interested in finding out. There's, there's that, uh, the, the one news post, we were, or the Reddit post we were talking about a while ago, the, the board members, Tomer, What's-His-Face, and the two other guys, mm-hmm. those, seem, those seem like it would have been, uh, those seem like it would be the, the primary source of that influence. Because, like, yeah, Richard Tell has been there for, what, since 2014? That's and something Unity's to remember. Been- he got, he's the reason Unity got to where it was at. Yeah, right? earning like, all that trust. I mean, that's easy. Everyone just push that aside and ignore it because that would <laughs> be yeah. accurate. But and 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 th- and then that merger with uh, with Iron Mountain, they bought out Weta. Like, yeah, there 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 is Unity is very much a different beast than what it was uh, even a couple of years ago. Now, right. So. Um. That, 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 like I said, I'd be very curious to read the book. But yeah, man, um, Whitehurst, you know, him getting popped in. Is not terribly that big of a surprise because he's on the um, board. He's a board member of um, oh, what is it? What's the name of the uh, the private equity uh, that owns a chunk Silver of Lake? Silver Lake of Unity? They got a big stake in Unity. They've reduced some of their investment in Unity, but him popping over after untangling with um, IBM and Red Hat came as no surprise. But look at this, Pedro Kotick is looking for a job. I hear though, so <laughs> yeah. Because, uh, yes, in, all, in uh, big industry news, Microsoft has finally been allowed to buy Activision Blizzard uh, King for uh, almost $69 billion. It took a while nice. for all the payments to get nice. go through. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah no, Bobby Kotick, one of, the, yeah, one of the agreements um, with Microsoft purchasing the conglomerate was that Bobby Kotick would be stepping down as CEO and Phil Spencer would be filling in the position. Mm -hmm. That's that's someone else with a lot of uh, job titles under him. Philip Spencer. Boss. (laughs) It says boss. Yeah. Big boss man. (laughs) I don't know, man. So what we think about this though, here's one thing. We talked about this in the pre pre super shows and go back and listen to that. If you're a patron, shameless blog, but do, um, what terrifies me a little bit worries me. Terrifies the wrong word. Uh, my boots are not quivering, but they're thinking about it. Is the developers? Because if you've you've been on this roller coaster, you've been working with your game, you had a game in production, you're in pre-production, and you're sitting there going, "Well, fuck, you know, now I got to go to Unreal Engine. Now I got to go figure out what the hell is it? Go to go to App Eleven or whatever." Yeah, you're looking at this and how it's being presented as, um, and I think Jordan's hit hit the uh, nail on the head with he's. God, this this guy, he's going to be interim. He, he's just coming and going to be some changes made. And somebody else is going to come in after him. But I don't want you to think this is over and done with. Nothing's been won here. Like this, that pricing structure, all that shit, 100% chance it's coming back. <laughs> I mean, yes. Yeah, speaking of those iPhone games, I think like that that's what's going to be keeping Unity afloat for the for like the foreseeable future is just like, mobile gaming because there's still 
It's still like uh, Unreal doesn't have that level of market penetration, but at least for like PC and console gaming, I definitely think that uh, we're going to start seeing. And they have to people. figure something out. Yeah, they they do. And you know, uh, pulling in investor money is a completely different ball game than making money. So maybe, maybe that's something you know Whitehurst is going to be able to help them out with. Because one of the things that I don't think Unity is really doing right now, is being wise, is like acquiring fuck all or nothing. There we go. That's my thoughts on it, gentlemen. What about grasshoppers? What are your thoughts on grasshoppers? <laughs> Fuck grasshoppers. Grasshoppers well, then, with caps. They make cool. great flour. <laughs> mm, that's, that's true. They do. It's very high protein. They also have a hard time finding sh uh, snail shells. Uh, <laughs> but if you, if you have an easier time, you might want to play Bugdom 2, which is available on GitHub. It's the, oh, it is a full source port of Bugdom 2, originally released for Mac OS. And Windows, uh, done with SDL, has a handy little build script that spits out an app image that you can also just download from their page. Uh, and it, it builds, it launches uh, very, very minimal uh, like build requirements. You basically just need like SDL and a C compiler and you're good to go. Where are we uh, at with trusting build scripts? I don't. I, uh, well, if you, if you scroll okay, down. Let, they, me they, they, let me rephrase that. I would nano build.py before I run it. Yes. Yeah. You you open the Python file first. You yeah, have like, to look through uh, it. You, yeah, like you know what? Yeah. I, I was I was a little spicy. I ran the build script, but um I, with, with, without looking at it. But like it it's based the it gives you the, the full instructions basically just to uh, <sighs> build on Windows. I love reading these. Um <laughs> yeah. you have to um, set up your development environment. G makes visuals <laughs> oh man. Okay. True. I mean, you know what? That's not as bad as I was expecting. Yeah. It's using CMake. Um, it's cheating. Yeah. Right. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, it, la it launches out of the box. Really, really likes my leftmost monitor. Uh, but uh, other than that, everything works fine. Picks up the DualShock 4 controller, picks, it sh spits it out in like, the, the console and everything. Uh, it, it works. Like, yeah, you r ran around, jump around. I, found, I, I punched a, a, an acorn until it exploded into a flower. And then I threw another one at a squirrel. And I can confirm that it works. I tried it out myself, and um, it also has a handy little app image that you can just download from the GitHub repo. CHModX, yeah, that bad boy. If, if, if you build it, it just straight up makes the app image. They don't even like, yeah. give you the... Yeah, yeah I, I downloaded download the, app the app image, image, but I never launched it. <laughs> yeah. uh, I liked it when I played it. It picked up the PS4 with Rubble support. Yes. I mean, it jiggled around a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's like, like Jordan, man. Sam the snail, fuck him. He's up something. He's missing his shell. I don't trust that motherfucker a bit. Unlike the uh, hillbilly um, squirrel, yeah, he needs, he needs that acorn, man. No, I'm talking about yeah, yes, yes, same one. He's like, hey, man, here's a <laughs> yeah. map. I'm like, okay, uh, it's no Cro-Mag Rally, which was another title from um, Pangea. Mm. Yeah, but no, if, uh, kudos on Pangea actually allowing people to keep their games alive and allowing an entire new audience yeah. of people to experience those games and the nostalgia people to just go back into yeah. the games. That's so really nice. <laughs> they, they and like they drop the entire entire source code as Creative Commons yeah. share alike. Yeah. So like, there's it, no assets or yeah. things to download. But yeah, let's be very clear about their games. They're uh, all in the same uh, 3D engine that they created, sandbox for the most part, with uh, just different assets kind of moving around. Yeah. So like it's all like yeah. Mario 64 like right Bugdom <laughs> Nenosaur 1 and 2 Nenosaur Extreme <laughs> Bugdom uh, Chromag <laughs> Rally. Which doesn't have a uh, online, but it, I mean, yeah. See if you if you see that, it's like that looks awfully familiar. If you just played uh, Bugdom, yes. <laughs> Bugdom too. Yeah, good on them though, man. Like you know, game preservation, keep it around, keep yeah. it going. Yeah. Source code, awesome. Spe speaking of game preservation, Open Red Alert, Open RA. They got their mm -hmm. October tenth release out. Uh, not a very very spicy one because they're pretty feature complete, honestly. Uh, a lot of it is just work to get the new uh, Command and Conquer remastered collections running. Uh, but the Tiberian Sun remastered multiplayer is now in preview. Uh, there are a bunch of Linux fixes if you go through the uh, changelog. Uh, they have a they have a their launcher now will detect if you're on a laptop or have multiple GPUs installed and will ask you which GPU you want to use, which so is spooky. which is nice. Yeah. Um, there's um, the internal uh, application survey now supports Linux distributions. So you'll get uh, stats based on if people are on like Ubuntu or Manjaro or whatever. And the flat pack, it won't crash with your Wayland session anymore. So that's that's <laughs> always nice. 
Second of the fun out of it. The Red Alert Global League Season 15 has just started everybody because, like, people apparently play this game. And um, we got the Dark Tournament just coming up. Registration's currently open for that. That that makes me happy, Jordan, when I see, um, yeah. like, a competitive segment or built around, you know, and like now retro, open Retro games? Yeah. Yeah. People still throwing down. Don't even think about joining that shit. They will fuck you up. Man. Oh, no, no. Yeah. These, yeah, these, no. these are these people are, who like eat, sleep and breathe command and conquer. Like, they've been playing this game for 30 years. So <laughs> they, they, they will mess your day up. Um, <laughs> another thing, this release is uh, progress has been made towards supporting CNC remastered collection, mm-hmm. which, so. which is really cool. It's still very good on EA that they're working with these guys to like make the shit work with with, the, yeah, with their that release was like the, the once in a blue moon good ea thing that they did it's like uh oh okay yeah, you guys are doing that here's the source go nuts yeah like <laughs> EA, ea's been a bit of a wild card right like they do they do some like really nice moves like hey ea play on steam all this shit works on proton mm-hmm. blah 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 and then they're like ah fuck you microtransactions here have the source code for command and conquer ah fuck you fire everyone from bioware ah, like <laughs> Listen, you, you, listen, you never know what's coming next. Everybody's dated an EA at some point. Right, so, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that, 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 that is the true truth. <laughs> so, there we go. If you want to tell us about your... Um, Crazy EA Relationships, yeah. Re- <laughs> adventures in dating uh, corporations. You can do that. Head over to LinuxGameCast.com. We got a contact page. We got a bunch of stuff in there. You know, put some boilerplate. Like, read that. Before sending things in, we got one for the show. We got one for weekly, daily Wednesdays. Relationship wise is always open. And Jordan will help you out. There, give us a name, email, subject, and some messages. And it might be something that's read right here on this show. Also, you can drop a Patreon comment or YouTube comment. Maybe on Odyssey, if I remember that we have an Odyssey page. Nothing against that. But give us a voicemail on Spotify. Do it. Yeah. There you go. We, the we want to hear your beautiful doing, voice. Be warned. <laughs> just go beep, beep, boop. I mean, if you do that, we'll fucking play it. I mean, it's us, right? <laughs> uh, if, if you if you just send us a voicemail, that's just like dial-up modem noises. <laughs> like a fax machine. <laughs> we'll try to figure it out, probably. So, what do we got this week, Jordan? We got some mail that's from Blue Flow, and they're talking about Wayland. They say, Wayland is only eight years away from being as old as X was when they decided that X was too old and started work on Wayland from 1984 to 2008 and from 2008 to present. Uh, when will they announce Wayland is too crafty and they're working on the replacement? Ha ha ha. So, like, yeah, here, here's the thing, though. Um... X is really fucking old, uh, and and as 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 we have, as we've discussed, technology has definitely moved uh, in in a different direction than some of the core assumptions that X was making. We've seen like on uh, the on Asahi Linux, like X just straight up doesn't work for a lot of the contexts. Uh, it's it's a security nightmare. Let, so the, hopeful, let the Apple users eat cake. Sure, let let them ha- let them have their one thing. Um, <laughs> they can't they can't play games anymore, so they might as well get cake. Um, but yeah, hopefully, but the, the, the design here with Wayland is hopefully a little bit more modular and a little bit more extensible now that we know kind because of, like before in the eighties, we had oscilloscopes and we had like dumb terminals. Now we have all sorts of various interfaces. We have like VR, AR, um, some like phones. Weird, yeah, f- f- phone, phones, different types of laptops, tablets. We're even getting into like stuff like leap motion or like different gesture based, um, control interfaces. Mm-hmm. So like. That, that kind of stuff doesn't necessarily play well in the X paradigm, and Wayland is designed to at least be extensible to support these new things as as they arise. So hopefully we don't run into a situation like the X Wayland thing currently, but I mean, we said, we, we said that about IPv6, and then no one ever adopted IPv6, so... Um, right? That, that solved all our problems, and we never used it. You know, I say Doc and Jazz, like, eight fucking years is a long time, eight years, but so is 15 years of development, and... That's where Wayland's at right now. Like, I don't know. Will <laughs> will we see something different than Wayland though? Something well, that's why I put X twelve in the fucking title because leave titles if you don't want me to do it because you end up with that. Um, will we get something different from Wayland? Because like, let's let's face it, Wayland's made it's been moving at the glacial speed of smell this entire time. It's like, it, that's it, a, it's got some big shoes to fill though. No, kinda... well, let's ask. Let's be realistic. <laughs> let's be completely fair and honest about this. If I'd asked you 10 years ago, would Wayland be done and ready? I would have said yes. Yeah. 
I, I <laughs> certainly hope it would have been. Uh, There's still again, yeah, that, that was, as that the was person who runs, though. Yeah, as the person who runs Wayland every single day on this box, uh, there's still a lot of stuff that it can't do. Now, it, admittedly, it does a lot of things better than X ever did, especially if you have multiple monitors with mixed refresh rates, and some have uh, free sync, some don't. Uh, it's um, on X, forget it, you're just not going to have a good time because there will be weird shit happening all the time. On Wayland, that's not even an issue. You just, no, this one is at 144, this one's at 60, that one's at 75. There, done. <laughs> it's, the, it's the small things, you know? The, those small things are what gives me hope because, yes, I, yeah. the, I, the I, different I, I, support for different displays and the, the ease with which it does it and the way that KD works so much better on Wayland than it does on X... Um, yeah, <laughs> I, it's almost there, man. Come on. <laughs> how, how, I, I, how many I'm, more I'm years? This is what go. I'm like trying to get to. It's like, how many more years of like, is it just almost there? It's like that sports team. Like we almost won this year. How, no, how like, long do you both, go until both Gnome and KD are talking about dropping X as a supported session? Talks to just, they're both doing it at this point. So they're, they're the two big ones. <laughs> I mean, when Red Hat does it, then you gotta go. Right, and the gnome uh, redhead. Yeah, right. yeah. And red, red, red hat is definitely definitely making those moves. That they're saying they're targeting what uh, rel eleven for cutting out X entirely. Um, but the new Fedora is decade. going to be Wayland only, supposedly. Yeah, yeah. or Fedora forty. And, and again, like I, I don't, I don't know if it's necessarily a matter of Wayland being ready. It's the other applications that need to catch up. It's the portals that need to be created. It's all the other supporting infrastructure because the protocol is pretty solid right yeah, now. And there's going to so, be so many applications that are just never going to be updated. That's true, uh, and that that's that's ho ho hopefully stuff like X Wayland can improve and reduce the the overhead. Uh, but there 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 is a lot of stuff that uh, you would need to have like implemented in there in order for it to do the things that like X normally does that Wayland doesn't. So I don't know. Uh, I, I I honestly I think I think we're in a pretty good place for like eighty percent of use. I think Wayland is is good enough, uh, and I think the, the 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 gap will continue to close. How much longer? Um, how much longer? If we got to do, if we got to do um, predictions. Um, uh, when's um, uh, the Red Hat uh, release coming out? That's based on Fedora Forty. Uh, when you can no longer run uh, X uh, officially supported from Red Hat, but another decade, Pedro. <laughs> Probably, I, and 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 I think like yeah, the the, the big one is going to be the big one. The biggest thing holding it back is going to be accessibility. But short of that, I think like. Yeah, and uh, that uh, honestly, like still... maybe one, one, one or two years, but with, with accessibility, definitely longer than that because there's there's a lot of other like problems that need to be solved to allow like then again, screen readers to was work. Still, uh, yeah. was still was still a big issue on X too because there was a lot of things that just didn't yeah work. The, you the, couldn't the, do on yeah, X because the problem with Waylon is accessibility <laughs> doesn't work by design. Yes, well, the, the, as a security, the, 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 the screen reading the, is a big no-no. <laughs> the problem with uh, accessibility on X is the only reason it works is because there is zero security. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, uh, it's got, 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 to, got to be something. I don't know. Maybe the happy middle ground, like, cause I, I see that a lot with the way I'm like, but secure, I'm like, it's a fucking desktop. I don't give a shit. But I need to cater to the people that do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's why I, portals I, I, are a thing, and that's why we actually need that to work. To be able to, if people want to punch that hole, it's like, no, I want access to read the screen so that I can have a text to voice to help people with eyesight issues. Yeah. And we run into situations <laughs> like Joshi trying to, it's like, hey man, we, we can make OBS work in this flat pack container. We gotta punch some holes. No! <laughs> But you're already doing that. Shut up. Yeah, but shut up. <laughs> yeah, see, see, that, that, that one is like, Joshi's like, well, we're going to punch the hole, but then we can replace the hole with this better thing, but we're doing it anyways, so we might as well just do it. And the OBS guys are like, but no. <laughs> but you're already doing it. No. <laughs> you know but what? We don't. You know, make, making your official thing a fucking flatback, you get everything you deserve. I have nothing but love for the OBS team. But, <laughs> that seems self-inflicted. <laughs> yeah. You should have went with snaps. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and then just shit wouldn't work. Just gotta run everything and snap. <laughs> Great. How, 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 how many loopback file systems do you want mounted this time? How many can you get mounted before things just start 
Oh, see, I, ooh, that's that's a good right? question because it's not it's not Linux that would fuck it. It would be like the file manager that's like, how many mount points do Something's I got to crawl? Hit yeah. an arbitrary fucking number digit punched in the code somewhere and be like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Stay tuned. Well, <laughs> sna- snaps for IoT. It only runs one thing ever, so you're never gonna run into this problem. That's why you do the whole VM in a snap. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, you run gnome boxes in a snap. <laughs> yeah. Or what? Snap. Oh, Jesus. Ladies and gentlemen. We got to get the hell out of here. Thanks for showing up and watching us live. If you get a chance, we do this every Saturday, 8.30 Eastern, Standard Moon Time. Subscribe to us on Twitch or follow us or click a heart or some shit. And you get email notifications sometimes if it feels like sending them out. It's kind of dope. But, you know, also calendars. They work. Anyway, if you want to get in touch with me, you can. I'm over on Zitter. Still doing that thing over there uh, at Vinstone. I'm on our Mastodon. We got mast.linuxteamcast.com. Somebody hit me up earlier this week. It's like, oh, I see you're doing the Mastodon thing now. You've had it. I was like, bitch, we've had a Mastodon instance for like seven years, man. Fuck off. I had to remember what my Mastodon account <laughs> password was a while ago. <laughs> that, was, that was the problem. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, just at Vin, mast.linuxteamcast.com. Being all federated in timeline as well. I'm Jordan. I'm all disassembled, and in order to assemble me, you need to unflat pack me and put me Bullshit. together. Bullshit! You Alan just want glue to sniff. I know you. I want Allen keys to munch on. Damn it! Find me on Mastodon at Frojo at Mastodon or on Twitter at The Burning Fool. Now I have this picture of Jordan swinging in a big uh, wrecking ball with no clothes. I on. came in like a wrecking ball. <laughs> yeah, it's just it's just a Ron Jeremy version. <laughs> just yeah, licking tools. Yeah, that, that's the uh, image yeah, that popped uh, into my yeah, head. Yeah, it's just like with the less hair. Yeah. <laughs> so you can find me also on uh, Mass Athletics Game uh, Gamecast.com. <laughs> it's uh, unaccounted for with the actual number four at the end. So hit me up on there. I'll hit you up right Smash back. him up, fam. <laughs> Bring him some blue paint. He'll be your friend forever. Time for some credits. Give me Allen keys. Om nom nom. Um, I wonder if you can buy candy Allen keys. Somebody's gonna make, have made that by now. <laughs> yeah, probably. Like IKEA, but, you should fucking sell candy but, cane but, but, Allen like, keys. Like fucking Popeyes candy cigarettes, but they're Allen keys. We gotta thank our advisors, <laughs> Omega, and our there, and we gotta thank our executive producers, Bob Bram, Scott Michaud, Atomic Ass, Mike G, Drummo, Tomash, Hakim, Dave, Ishep, Ian, and our little Nick fan, Super Desto, Empty, Glorious Eggy, and Newton. I gotta fix this chair. See <laughs> Rhino, Rider X, back in the Traji Veritanuda, Justin Nobin, Darkwing, System T, Denzig Joe, Ogi One, and Kai Real are the Sea Marsters with a Death Note. Ah. Nova! So stinky! Basil Chad, Romeo Marson, Renee, Dugli. Leonardo, the Kresny, Kavandro, Xanthorus Gaming, Peeble, <laughs> Rue, Live Turnover, In it, in it, D Spec, Totally Gaming PT. Oh, my fine, upstanding cannibals. <laughs> PT Dave. <laughs> Thank you so much for making this nonsense possible. Oh yeah, shameless plug. There's a thing uh, for the Raspberry Pi on Jitsi that we're running right now. If you're a patron, that video's up for your uh, perusal, inspection, comments. It's your chance to be like, you're wrong on something, and I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> Much better time than after I published it, because I ain't fucking changing it after it's on YouTube. <laughs> Bad fire, everyone. See you next Wrong week. forever, Linux Gamecast. five dudes.